Uh, Devin Gardner in studio. Joyke Bell, Sean Belegian here on Woodward Sports. Devin, so many people are talking about your time at Michigan, and, mm. and we could talk about so many different things that happened there, but as a guy who's been at Michigan, okay, I grew up in an era, and I'm saying this with respect, mm. I grew up in an era, every year set your watch to it, Michigan was either going to win the Big Ten mm-hmm. or it was going to come down to the game, right? right? Right. From afar, and I'm not asking you to throw your boys under the bus or anything like that, <laughs> what's kept Michigan in the last you know, almost 20 years from getting back to the top? Uh, it's a lot, right? I think a, a lot of it had to do with <clears throat> when the transition from Lloyd Carr to, to um, Rich Rod. Rich Rod, right? And Rich Rod, my guy, I love Rich mm-hmm. Rod, right? He recruited me. Mm-hmm. He believed in me. Uh, and, and I thank him for that. But nobody bought in, right? And, and you know how Michigan is, right? The fan base, nobody truly bought in to what he was trying to do. And you know what the crazy thing about that is? If everybody had bought in, right, it's including the university with the money and getting coordinators and things like that, if everybody had bought in, we would probably be on the verge of what Ohio State is right now, Mm -hmm. right? Because the whole big stigma was you can't run the spread with these guys in this conference. Can't do it. It's just not a thing you can do. And then we go on and by his third or fourth year, I think we were like the number two offense in the country and things. Our defense wasn't playing very well, but our coordinators weren't making the money that a lot of other coordinators were making either. Um, And then, I mean, not Rich Rod, but uh, Urban Meyer comes in and runs the exact same thing and just pays a little more attention to defense and things like that. And then they rattle off and don't lose a single game in like three years in the conference, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's just like, what could it have been if they bought in and, and maybe stuck it out just a little longer with a guy because if you think about it that next year we lose the Michigan State because we're trying to run the pro style with Denar Robinson right we go to what coach Rod was doing but a lesser version and we go win the Sugar Bowl <laughs> so maybe let him stay one more year right I mean I just that was something that uh, I, I didn't understand I was young right and I was just trying to get on the field you know I don't have anything to do with coaching changes and things like that but I'm just trying to play but now that I sit back and think like wow what could it have been, right? Denar Robinson finishing his deal out and then me rolling in there, right, with some pro style aspect and still being able to run and, and really, really uh, just dominating defenses and giving them headaches. Because if people don't know, Coach Rod is the originator essentially of that spread high tempo offense, mm-hmm. right? That's mm-hmm. his baby and everybody's kind of taken things from him and developed it and all these different things. But he is the originator of that slide, right? He's the originator of it. Uh, and, and and we kind of like ran him out of there, right? Because he's not a Michigan guy. And, and you, we have to stop that because, you know, everybody can't go to Michigan, right? Everybody can't coach at Michigan, but there are some talented individuals, right? As far as young players coming up, that maybe want to transfer in or, or coaches that are other places, right? Right, that want to come in, and, and we got to try to take care of our own once they become us and not try to, you know, move them out just because they aren't Michigan guys. So how do you feel about Harbaugh coming in? Do you think they, they're, they're buying into what he's selling? So with, with Harbaugh, I think, it's, I think it's very – it's a touchy, you know, situation, right, because he comes in, right, and, and he's the hope for all, right? He's the quarterback. He's the Michigan guy, honestly, yeah, right? You know, yep. People talk about Brady Hope being a Michigan guy. Michigan guy. He just coached at Michigan. This is the Michigan guy. Dad coach. Went to Ann Arbor Pioneer. Played at Michigan, right? He is a Michigan man if there ever was one. But uh, he's had a rough goal of it, right? And, and the one thing that everybody's kind of pointing to is like, wow, we have all these towns of players. We haven't gotten the quarterback position right, right? If you look at the rosters and you look at the way we play, that's the one thing we haven't gotten right. And so a lot of people point to, well, our DBs are getting beaten. Right? But you have to understand, when a defense – doesn't think that their quarterback yeah. can perform well, they don't play as good, right? They don't play as inspired, right? And so things get by them. And then once the snowball starts rolling, you know how that works, right? The snowball gets bigger and bigger, and you get kind of a uh, power drive. And I kind of like like to relate it to Tom Brady, right? Why don't why do Tom Brady's defenses always play so good? Like, why are they always so good? Like, they know on the other side of the field, they can play freely. They can make mistakes because there's a guy over there Right? There's a guy on their sideline that's going to make sure that they have every chance to win the what game. What a great point. They have a great Holy chance to win crap. the game. So it's not that Tom Brady's a great – and so people talk, oh, Tom Brady's not coaching defense. No, he's not. But he's giving that defense inspiration, right? He's giving yeah. them a reason to fight because they know 23-6 to six or 29, whatever the score was, they're going to have a chance to win. They're going to have a chance to win. They're going to play inspired, and they're going to play way beyond – what they actually are, and that's why his defense is always so good. And look at every good quarterback. That's how it works. Look at that. Great stuff. Devin Gardner kindly joining us here. You know what? I, I want to say one thing going back to the Rich Rod era because I was one of those guys, and full disclosure, I'm a Spartan fan. Mm-hmm. Okay? Happens to all of us. 
That was the best, you know. Minus 48 doesn't happen very often, but it was there. I had to take it. I hey, hope you don't hey, hate wait, me wait, for wait, it. Wait. But the minus 48 thing is so weird to me. Um, I threw for the most yards in that game. People would ignore that you than did. any you other did. Big Ten quarterback on the season with nobody blocking. Uh, nobody did nobody. That. nobody. I would like make one Dude, guy miss and then another listen, guy miss and then four guys would tackle me. Again, there, there, was, there was a time in that game, I remember, where you were laying on the ground. And like you just look like a man, like, like I'm not getting up. You people aren't blocking for but me. But I got up. And you, but Every you single get time. Up. But I mean that. Because I'm, I'm not it. a coward, dude. I felt like I'm not being funny. No, but yeah, the I Rich felt Rod that era. Way. How you felt? I okay, felt good, good, good. All right. So, listen, the Rich Rod era. I was one of those guys when he came in. I, I, I was crapping my pants. Yeah. Like because I saw what being a college be. football fan. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I've been lucky to be a Heisman a voter. Like, watching more than just in our little bubble, I was like, holy crap, this is real. The one thing that I will say, and I'm not going to ask you to say anything, his insistence on running the 3-3-5 mm-hmm. in this fucking freaking conference was mind-boggling yeah. to me. What are you doing? Yeah. So it was no surprise a team like Wisconsin. You know what Wisconsin is going to do to you. Yeah, they're going to keep giving yeah. you. They're going to keep giving the joint bells of the of, of the world the ball. Mm-hmm. But what do you expect is going to happen? Yeah. They're going yeah, to keep your offense off the field yeah. and pound that defense. That was the one thing that I thought hurt you guys in that era. Oh, without question, right? But his whole idea was we're going to score more points, right? Which was that wrong? Probably, right? But think about it, Ohio State. Right, we score forty two and they beat us, or forty and we and they beat us. You know what I mean? So yeah. that is a thing, right? That's a thing that can happen. Though you would much rather your defense not give up forty points and things like that. But you know, I just think that they should have given them another opportunity because those, those same guys the next year. It's not like our defense were world beaters, right? Mm-hmm. They, they were won a Sugar Bowl, right? But you know, they played pretty well. They got older, right? They were more experienced. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Was that the sentiment mm-hmm. in the room? What? Wait, did most guys like when they made the decision to move on from Rich Rod? Mm-hmm. Because we all heard the story mm-hmm. about you know the the end of the the end of the season, and you raised me up, and people made a big deal. I know you rolled your eyes. I'm not trying to put you, yeah. but did you guys in the room <laughs> feel that way? Did you go? We want we want Coach back. Was that was that the general sentiment, or was it mixed? Uh, I think it was mixed, right? Okay. Because the one thing about uh, Coach Rod, he's hard, right? He's similar to me in the way I teach the young young athletes I work with hard because he knows what you're going to experience when he plays in the game, right? He tells stories about his playing days, about how he almost crapped his pants a lot of times, yeah. and it's because of the fire he wasn't put in, right, you know, in the beginning, and then he learned as he got older as a player that, to put himself in that fire or have his coach put himself in the fire, but uh, he put you through that fire in practice, man. It, I'll tell you a funny story. I thought for sure I was going to be the starter, right, coming in as a freshman, Right, and it's not because like oh I'm the number one quarterback in the country I'm gonna be the guy. It's like I'm playing so well, right? And I felt like I was out, out playing Denard, right? And and the, what helped me believe that I was out playing Denard because we were taking reps with the ones, right? Switching out, I was playing well, he was playing well. Thought I was playing better, you know, it happens. Uh, um, but he would lose his mind on Denard, and the, some of the things he would say to him, and I'm just like, there's no way he likes this guy. Secondly, there's no way he's going to let this guy quarterback his team. No way. No way. It's not going to happen. Right? We get to the uh, game, uh, right, the, like the night before. Like, literally, people say, like, oh, yeah, it's a battle up until the day. Like, literally, the night before the game, he came into the quarterback room. He said, Denar, you're going to start off the game. All right? You're going to be starter. And I'm like, I can understand that. Right? He's older. Right? We play. It was equal. I would start him, too. Right? He's the fastest man alive at this point. You know? Yeah, sure I, I would start him, too. Devin, you're going to be next, right? If he can't perform, you'll be the guy. I'm fine with that, right? I just got here, right? I, I, I earned what I, you know. And then it's like, Tate, you'll, you'll follow, right? Bet. I beat out Tate. I mean, that's pretty good. He started yeah, last year, yeah, right? I'm feeling yeah. good about it, right? And so we get in the game, and obviously everybody remembers he plays in UConn, right? Mm-hmm. And he plays amazing, right? He's playing amazing. But then he gets hurt, right? Gets hurt. Not hurt, actually. He's tired. But I found out later he was tired. He got hurt. And guess who comes in the game? It's me. I'm jogging out. You know, I don't know if people remember. And and the crowd loses it. Oh my gosh, is here. He does it. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so for me, I'm thinking like we're on offense. Can we please quiet down? Right? I'm I'm 18, maybe, I don't know, 17, 18 years old. Right? And so they never be quiet, right? The whole time I'm trying to get ready. So you got the one word call. I call the play. And so this is our cadence. Ready, set, go. It's it. It's very simple, right? Get the ball out. Ready, set, go. Nobody moves, but I hike the ball. Nobody moves, but I hike the ball. So imagine what's going through my body at this point, right? 
I'm just like, oh my God, I'm not ready. He should have been meaner to me. He was so nice to me, and I'm not ready. Right? This is why. At that moment, I'm like, this is why. This is why you are doing your players a disservice if you don't rip their face off. Because now, an emotion is going through my body that I've never experienced. I'm always like, God. So now, now what do you have to do? You have to get the ball hiked, right? You're number right. in the country. You got to get the ball hiked. Ray! Let go! Right? I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. Guess what? Guess what I forgot? The play. the play! I forgot the play! So, but now, if you, if I would have remembered the play, I probably would have had a 70 yard touchdown and hit my head on the goalpost. Because I pulled the ball and I like ran the wrong way. But if I would have stuck my foot in the ground and gone vertical, I would have scored a touchdown. And now we have a controversy and a problem. Yeah. I'm also Denar Robinson, a little slower. But. It, yeah, but th- but that's the reason he was so hard, right? He was so hard, and he has a podcast right now called Hard Edge, right? Yeah, like it's yeah, a yeah. it's a thing that he lives by, mm. and it's because he knows when that fire gets hot in the game, right? And Joy knows mm. this: when that fire gets hot, there is no substitute. You can't prepare for it. You no. can only hope to try, and that was his method. Yeah. But some guys just didn't understand. No, it's that. funny. So uh, so as he said, he's sitting here, he's saying that, right? So the the rule of thumb is. The, the running back coach will always tell the running back, you do not leave that huddle without getting a play from the quarterback. I said, "What? you do not leave that huddle without getting a play from the quarterback. And so I remember we were playing, uh, we were playing the Eagles, um, at the Eagles, and the crowd was so loud I couldn't hear the play. And I'm standing like two guys over from the quarterback. And, and, and this, is, this, is, this is how they listen, like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just, <laughs> we, we never, never look at you because you, so you got to choose where you got to get your. You, you can't look at it because yeah. you can try to read his lips, but you can't. So you got to put your ear. That's and, great. And so and so he calls the play, and so we break. Everybody heard the play but me. Man, 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 and then I would imagine he's saying it super fast, right? I remember he said being it super with Tom Brady. He goes, blah, 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 ready? What? What did he say? <laughs> what? what? Hold on, wait. Shut up. You can't, you you can't get this to Johnny. I'm Johnny. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I'm just, and, so, and, so, and so this play, he, gave, he gives two plays. He gives you the play, then they have a can play. So if he cans it, it's this play. And so you, you got to make sure you can think. You you gotta, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So he's. He's literally <laughs> underneath the center. Matt, Matt, what's the play, Matt? Matt, what's the play? Nine. He, he, he like he he leaves the center, comes back, says it again. I still didn't hear. But off, but off of um, going through practice, I knew it, it could only be one play. <laughs> All right, this and is what so, it could be. And so I, I waited to That's see which way great. he turned before, I, and it was a handoff to me. And I got about nine yards on it, and the coaches never said anything because it looked like I knew what the play was. <laughs> and so these are the plays in the game where the preparation is key yeah. because if you don't know the play, if you hear one thing, you might, and you might be able to catch on to it. Yeah. And so it's funny to hear him say that. Yeah. This Every is, yeah. athlete has that story, right? I, I, I can remember in the Notre Dame game, the game I was talking about, hundred fifteen thousand, yeah. yeah. right? This is the this is the play to ice the game. It's third down. We're inside the twenty yard line, and I have Jeremy Jackson. Anybody remember Jeremy Jackson? I do. Right? Yeah. Six foot four. Yep. Obviously not a running back, right? Mm-hmm. But he's in the backfield, so we can get a look at what kind of defense I'm going to have. Is it man, right? Because if a, if a corner comes in and stands right there in front of him, right, it's man to man, right? Because he's not a running back. I'm supposed to motion him out, so I start my cadence. Say, Blue 80! Blue 80! And then he starts sprinting. Devin, you forgot to motion me! <laughs> <laughs> Said Hut! <laughs> Obviously, it worked out amazing because now we got his guy sprinting out, almost picking his own guys. Drew DeLeo coming up, doing his deal. Ended up being wide open. Obviously, I got crumbled like a piece of paper because, as you know, the... Blocking, just you know, got my like favorite, and throw him, throws him the game icing touchdown. Nobody ever looks at how I was folded like a piece of paper and just say, "Oh, great route by Dilio." Wait, wait, did you guys see me? I got hit by four guys. As I was throwing, what are you doing? But you know that that that's another story where it's like I completely forgot that I had to motion this six foot four guy that's yeah. clearly not a running back out of the backfield to the yeah. outside receiver spot, yeah. those, not to the slot, to the outside receiver. Those spot. games at night, I, and, and if you remember back then, a lot of the blue bloods didn't want it. Yeah. They were so used to, no, no, Michigan kicks off at 12 at the very latest 3.30. Devin, I was I was at that game. Electric. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, more. Give me more. Everybody responds. Not the, not only the people in the stands, but you guys yeah. on the field. Yeah. I mean, that energy It's a different type real. of energy for sure. Def- yeah. Definitely a different type of energy. 
And that's why that white out at Penn State is insane. Literally, everybody's wearing white. Yeah. How could you get a whole stadium, 109,000 people, to be on the same court? That's incredible. Like, are our fans not wearing our colors? Because it seems like nobody's wearing yellow or maize or any other colors. It's, it's really you weird. you want to be like Stanley Cup champion Darren McCarty, go to CoastPortland.com and get your Coast products today.